we oftentimes get so much stuck in the external aspects of worship. In order to understand worship, we all know this analogy. Who hasn't ever heard of the tip of the iceberg analogy? We all know it, right? The tip of the iceberg. What you see of an iceberg is the tip of it, right? And that's 10% of it. People get preoccupied with that 10%. They don't realize that the real iceberg is underneath. You can't see it. It's underwater level. That's the real iceberg. The tip of the iceberg is above water by virtue of the 90% that's underneath. The same applies to worship. Oftentimes we get preoccupied with the number of rak'ahs we're going to pray, right? We get preoccupied with the number of pages or juz we're going to recite. And it's all about finishing my portion of the Quran, finishing that juz of the Quran. And it's all about going like, I prayed 36 rak'ah today. Yeah, but you were sleeping in most of them. You were nodding off. You were passing out in your salah. Do you even remember what the Imam recited? No clue. You don't even remember anything about your salah. That's not salah. That's not salah because what you see, what you notice with your eyes, with your ears, with your five senses of the act of prayer is only 10%. The reality of the act of prayer is what's underneath. And what's underneath in human beings is in your heart. In your heart, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala points to this fact. You know, the Qurbani that we offer in Eid al-Adha. They slaughter it and people, it seems some people were so much concerned about the blood and about the shape of it and the, and the size of it and, and the, the price of it and so on and so forth. So preoccupied with that 10% which is the tip of the iceberg. And so Allah subhanahu wa says, لَن يَنَالَ اللَّهَ لُحُومُهَا وَلَا دِمَاؤُهَا You know, the flesh of it, the blood of it, is not going to reach Allah. Allah is not going to take direct benefit from it. وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْكُمْ What reaches Allah of all of this is the taqwa that's in your heart because of this act of worship. This is why Shaykh al-Islam Taymiyyah rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, ما جعلت الصلاة ولا الصيام ولا الذكر ولا تلاوة القرآن إلا للقلب. He says the prayer, the fast, the recitation of the Quran, the dhikr, all these acts of worship, they were not designed for their own sake. They were designed for your heart. So he says what matters with Allah is what your heart is going through as you perform these acts of worship. Does it mean we have to do away with these acts of worship? You can't. These are an obligation. These are a physical vessel that you have to abide by them. You have to commit to them. You have to fulfill them to the letter as the Prophet ﷺ prescribes as you find in the Quran. You can't play with that. That's legislation. It's not our right. But you have to focus on what is the impact of all of this on your heart. What reaches Allah is the taqwa that grows in your heart as you are engaging in these acts. So what we want this Ramadan, if you really want this Ramadan to be special, don't be obsessed with the externalities. Don't be obsessed with externalities. Perform them. Perform them. But let your attention, divert your attention from the number of rak'ahs, the number of pages you're going to recite, or how long you stu stood in a prayer, to the quality, to your inner experience as you are engaging. When you make your salah, let's take a clear example. Now, let me make it clear. The Prophet ﷺ says in the authentic hadith, Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli. You have to pray as the Prophet ﷺ prayed. There's no other way. There's no other way around it. So it's an obligation upon us to learn how the Prophet ﷺ prayed and do exactly that. We have to. But once you do it, you understand this, it becomes automatic. It becomes extremely automatic, taken for granted. At the beginning as you're learning it, maybe you're getting away from traditions and from culture and from what your parents taught you and you figure out how to pray properly according to the Sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. It takes a little bit of attention. You need to put attention because you're going against your habits, right? Against something you've already built, you've lived with for a while. Now you're building new habits. Once you get into that and you've internalized the, 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 the Prophet's prayer and you perform it, that's it. You don't have to dwell into the physica in the phys on the physicality. There are people who are obsessed with the physical state of the prayer 
that you find that it's an obsession like when my hands like this or where they're like this where they're like that oh. and where does their attention go completely with the physicality then it doesn't stop there they start observing other people around them are their feet feet straight are they close are they leaving a gap are they moving their finger in their tashahud where do they put their hands as they go for sujood they put their palms first or their knees first right where is Allah in this process? If your mind is busy with all of this, tell me where is Allah? Out of the picture, completely out of the picture. You're not praying. You're not praying. And the Prophet says in the authentic hadith so clearly, You will not get of your salah except what you are mindful of. That means whatever of your prayer you were of your prayer you were present with your heart was there your, your mind was there your attention was there that's what you get from your salah if you're going through your salah half asleep and just going through the motions the prophet said till he reached a person prays their prayer and they only get half of it. Half of it. A third of it. A fourth, a fifth, a sixth, until he mentioned a tenth of it. So he says, لَيْسَ لَكَ مِن صَلَاتِكَ إِلَّا مَا عَقِلْتُ What you get from your salah is what your heart was in. What your heart was experiencing. So what is what do we call this in salah? خُشُوعَ خُشُوعَ so it's not the voice of the Imam is good and you're sort of, you know, enjoying the voice and you're turning your head around like you're listening to a singer. No. When your heart is in khushu, your, your head doesn't go like that. When you are in a state of khushu, your soul connects to Allah. It's a spiritual experience. Hudayfa ibn Imam radiallahu anhu has a statement. It's in Musannaf ibn Abi Shayba and it's authentic. He says, the first thing, the first aspect of your religion to be lifted and taken away is khushu'ah. Is khushu'ah. And how often you will find someone who prays, they pray, and there is no good in them. They are evil, they're bad, that's what it means. There's no good in them. وَيُوشِكُ أَن تَدْخُلَ الْمَسْجِدَ الْقَوْمِ فَلَا تَجِدُ فِيهِمْ خَاشِعًا And he says, it seems that soon, the time will come very soon when you enter a masjid of a people and you will not find among them one person who has khushu. Now, some of the scholars who commented on that statement, they said, the first thing to be lifted from your from your deen, from your religion, is khushu'. Why? Because it's intangible. It's not something physical. You can't say I missed. You can say I missed ruku', right? I missed the middle tashahud. You can. It's physical. You can point it out. But it's hard to say I missed khushu'. It's invisible. So it's easy just to pray. And that's it. This is why someone, one, one person prayed in front of the Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ, when he finished, he says, Irj'i salli fa inna kalam tu salli. Go and pray again because you have not prayed. The man prayed. But the Prophet ﷺ said, you have not prayed. Why? It doesn't count. It doesn't count. You just went through it robotically so quickly. So he prayed again. And he came back. The Prophet ﷺ said, Irj'i salli fa inna kalam tu salli. Go pray again. You haven't prayed. He says, Ya Rasulullah, علمني والذي نفسي والذي بعثك بالحق لا أحسن غير ذلك. He says, O Messenger of Allah, I know nothing better than that. Teach me. And the Prophet ﷺ told him how to pray. And it was about tumanina. Tumanina is the ground for khushu'. So what I'm saying, you want this Ramadan to be the best ever in your life. You want this Ramadan to be special. What I would say, make a point this Ramadan, this year, to turn your attention as you perform what you perform for the sake of Allah. Turn it to your heart. 
turn it to your heart. Experience this the sweetness of Iman as you are going through your acts of worship. Through fasting, which we think it's mere physical abstinence, right? But no, we want to tune into a different level of that experience this year, inshallah. When you read Quran, all of us want to read more Quran. I believe it was Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu who says, لَأَنْ أَقْرَأَ آيَتَيْنِ فَأَتَدَبَّرُهُمَا خَيْرٌ لِي مِنْ, أقرأ من أَنْ أَقْرَأَكَ الْقُرْآنَ كَامِلًا هَذَّا he says that I recite two verses of the Quran, that I reflect upon them and I contemplate on their meanings. It's better for me than reciting the whole Quran, just going through the words. So I'm telling you, the reward is not when you recite Quran, when you pray, when you're fasting. It's not with the quantity. It's not. It's not. It's not with how thirsty you are. It's not with how hungry you are, how tired you are. It's not with how many pages you recited, how many times you finished the whole Quran in Ramadan. It's not with how long your rak'ahs were. It's not with how many rak'ahs you prayed. It's not with that. These are just a small part of it. The reality is, the verse in Surah Al-Hajj, وَلَكِنْ يَنَالُهُ التَّقْوَى مِنْكُمْ What's happening in your heart? What's happening in your heart as you are engaging with these things? You can say, Subhanallah, 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 hundred times, right? How many rewards have you got? It could be nil, could be zero, could be. It could be zero. As the Prophet says, "Laysa lakum min salatika illa ma aqilt." If this is salah, what about dhikr and other things? So in your dhikr, as Imam Al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, إِنَّمَا جُعِلَ الذِّكْرُ أَصَالَةً لِلْقَلْبِ وَمَا جُعِلَ اللِّسَانُ إِلَّا دَلِيلًا وَرَائِدًا لِلْقَلْبِ فِي الذِّكْرِ So he says, dhikr, the reality of dhikr, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this act of worship was designed for the heart. It's an engagement of the heart. He says, but the tongue there is a precursor. It's just a pointer for your heart. That's it. That's it. And this is why there's a big debate among the scholars and the strongest opinion which Ibn al-Qayyim really champions is if a person just does dhikr without really contemplation, without having an inner experience. Say, Alhamdulillah, 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 Alhamdulillah. I'm already thinking of, you know, what I'm going to do uh, tomorrow as I'm doing shopping. What are the items I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to you know, buy, right? He says, in this case, you don't get no reward whatsoever. Nothing. So what is the kir? It's your heart experience, heart experience. And since we live in a world that there's a lot of emphasis on achievement, external achievement, most of us uh, have been devoured by this culture of focus on how things look like, not what things really are. So as long I look like someone who's good, that's what being good means. For many people, being good means looking good. Being honest means looking honest, even if you are dishonest. So we have exchanged, we have traded off the real thing for the mere facade of it. That's scary, that's what hypocrisy is.